So I've had quite a few women um, write me throughout the last few months just asking for wisdom on how to be a biblical wife. And it's such a hard, broad question to answer, especially when you're not with somebody face to face to know what their particular specific struggles are, because somebody may struggle with, um, nagging, somebody may struggle with bitterness, somebody may struggle with resentment or, um, just not respecting their husband, submission. There's so many things, you know, and, um, we can all improve in this area because like I've said in my other videos about the curse, it is a constant battle and it's supposed to be a constant battle. It's never going to become just, oh yeah, I got this. That's not real. That's not real life. I know numerous women who've been married for 20 plus years and yes it's easier but it's still a battle because they're still human and they're still battling the flesh and their sinful nature and the curse of women which is wanting to have control over our husbands um so somebody asked me for like a step-by-step -step and that's like I asked my husband I'm like what do I say like it's really hard to say what a step-by-step -step would look like on how to just start this process, but I do think reading Proverbs 31 is a great starting point. Praying to the Lord, repenting for your past behavior, repenting for your lack of um, fulfilling, you know, the two commandments that are clear as day constantly to wives, respect and submit to your husband, and um, then go and talk to your husband and let them know, you know, I can see that even though I struggle with wanting to have control over you because that is my natural sinful nature and the curse that is upon me as a woman, I also see my desire in my heart, even though it's hard to exercise this, that the true desire is I want to be led by you and you have been called to be the leader and you have been called to be the head of my home and I have been called to submit and even though it's hard to do that, that's what I want. So I know that I've been behaving in this way up to till this point, but let's link arms and make a change in our marriage and work together as a team. There is nothing wrong with telling your husband, I have failed you in submitting and respecting you, or I struggle with respecting you, and I see it, and I'm not blind to it, and I want to change that, and I need God's help, and I need your help and your forgiveness, and that's okay. So I would say to be transparent with your husband and talk about it and make it a new plan and goal for you guys as a couple, as a marriage, you know? Um, so I really think Submission is a very hard thing to describe because people think of it so ugly. They think of it as like the woman has no voice, the woman has no opinion, the woman has no say in anything. That is not true. Our primary role as wives is we're the helpmate. We are our husband's suitable helper. That's why God made us. That's our role, the role he gave us. And God made the man the head. And two-headed monsters are freaks. Like you hear this say among the Christian world all the time. A two headed two heads are not always better than one. Two headed monster is chaos, you know. You don't want two people trying to have control and to lead. You even though you're equal in God's eyes, even though you're both created in God's image, even though you're both um uh, can be used by God in various ways even though you may have strengths in one area and they may be weak in that area and your husband may be strong on an area that you're weak in that doesn't it's not a superior or anything like that it's just roles you submit to your role which is submit respect follow your husband takes his role which is lead and provide and be the spiritual uh, leader of his home so with that said, it's just a role. It's just what your duties are. And you are his helper, so you can help him with his role. If he's having trouble making a decision, he's open to hear your suggestions, your advice even. Like, there have been numerous times my husband would say himself that I have helped him come to a decision by giving him biblical wisdom. Not because I made the decision, but because he asked me. I gave him biblical truth from scripture or my thought or whatever and it's helped him say yes that's what we're doing and the other way around I have been totally opposed to his idea and think we should do this or that and then he explains to me why and I'm like wow you're right and I submit you know there's conversation is allowed it's not this is what we're doing woman okay okay whatever you say 
It's not like that. Sometimes it is like that, though. I do. I will throw out there. If you find yourself constantly opposing, constantly questioning, constantly having a better suggestion or a better idea, or why don't we do this, why don't we do that, every time your husband has opens his mouth or says, let's do this, then you are not allowing him to lead. And that's what I, uh, my husband's answer was. I was like, what do I tell someone who wants their husband to lead? He was like, just tell them to let him lead. Because really, that's what it boils down to. We have the power to uplift, encourage, and help our husbands to fulfill their role effectively by following effectively. But if we don't follow and we're constantly coming against their ideas or making another suggestion or saying this or that, then we're not letting them lead because we're not following. We're always wanting to lead. And um, it's so hard to, this is such a broad topic and there's so countless scenarios, little tiny things that don't really matter that much, but can in some occurrences and then huge things that really matter. So my advice is for the woman, Find a woman who you can talk to, who you can um, be discipled by, mentored by, that you can um, learn from and maybe observe how she submits and respects and follows her husband because something like this, it is a daily effort. It is a constant um, thing that you need to be focused on and living out. And um, for our husbands, you know, they don't have especially if you stay at home, you have more opportunities to see your friends when you, your kids hang out together or whatever, you know, but our husbands, they work so much and then they come home and they're with us. They don't have as much time to be with their friends as we do. So we get all this deep conversation in and just all these profound topics come up with submission and respect and parenting biblically and all these things that we get to talk about. And our husbands don't get to have those deep discussions on a very uh, regular basis with their friends. So if you're a wife and your husband's always home and you know, that's how I am. My husband's always with me when he's not working. Of course he does things here and there. Um, arrange free time for him. Let him go and hang out with his friends and let him, um, go and pursue hobbies or interests, you know, um, obviously not every day, obviously not every other day, even once a week might be too often, but you know, at least, you know, a few times a month. Um, and maybe he'll be able to build friendships and have a little more substance there so that they can talk about these deep issues and just pray that the Lord would bring men into his life that are going to be bold and encouraging and edifying and that they will talk about those hard issues like how is your how are you doing leading your family? How are you doing um, being the head of your home? How are you doing spiritually uh, being the head and the provider? You know, these things come up a lot more infrequently among men than they do with women. Women are like, so how's your marriage? The first two seconds of hanging out. It's hilarious. So, you know, just pray for your husband. Pray for those conversations. Have those conversations. Take your role immediately and allow him to lead. And um, I do talk about Proverbs 14.1 on some of my other videos. It talks about how the wife has the power to build her house or tear her, her house down with her own hands. And I think that women, we don't realize how powerful we are. Our attitudes, our behavior, our words, our aggression, our, we can destroy our husbands in a matter of months if we are careless. And we need to be very, very careful and guard our speech guard our facial expressions, guard our body language, guard our comments, our attitudes, um, find things to encourage them, to thank them for, to show them you appreciate them with, leave them little notes, descriptive, detailed notes of how you appreciate what they're doing, working so hard for your family, providing so well for your family, um, leading your family well, whatever, you know, or even encourage them. I'm praying that God will bring men into your life to teach you or to help you um, learn more in depth about your role or I'm praying for you to um, for the strength that you need from the Lord to lead our family well like it's okay to say you know we battle this and we want to get better like it's not this the secret thing that you can't talk about with your spouse it's on the contrary talk to them about it you know um, 
So just find ways to encourage them and support them and let those things significantly outweigh the complaints and whatever. And then also don't have complaints, you know, like there's so many things that our husbands do um, and they love you and they care about you and they want to try to help you. They may not do it exactly how you want them to do it or how you would have done it. Who cares? What is more important? The harmony and the peace in your marriage or the fact that he didn't put the bowls in the right place in the cabinets? Seriously. <laughs> you know, don't let stuff like that get to you. Let it slide off. Leave the bowls where he put them as well. Don't change it. Don't fix what he has done to try to help you. Next time around, when they're all dirty again and you put them away, then you put them in the right place. Whatever. You know, there's just so many things that we do or say that can really hurt them and make them feel like, fine, then I won't try, you know? And then, um, let's see. Um, focus on, focusing on the right things. Don't focus on all the things that are annoying, that you wish he did different, that you wish he did, that he doesn't do. Stop focusing on that. <laughs> focus on all the blessings that you have in him. You have to really, really shift your perspective. And also, the bad is like nothing compared to the good. Um, so focus on the good. And even if that's not the case, focus on the good. Um, make sure your body language is very, very... Um, just be aware how obvious your body language and your facial expressions um, are. How they communicate exactly how you're feeling. and. Um, just be mindful to smile, to have good posture. You know, if your husband can see the way you're carrying yourself and know that you're annoyed or bothered. And if you want to talk about something, you know, don't s walk around huffing and puffing. Talk to him. Um, your children can see that. It makes the atmosphere of the home blah. That's not what we're striving for here. We're striving for a harmonious, loving, peaceful, cheerful environment. Um, a refuge for your family and if you're <sighs> it's the opposite <laughs> um, a few years ago I went to a baby shower and the baby showers at my church are like different than any baby shower on the planet I'm convinced but we have like a speaker who just speaks wisdom into the mother-to-be's life and then we all pray for the mother-to-be and one of the things that one of the speakers said and these speakers are like women at my church it's not like we hire somebody. Um, it's just women at my church, the older women teaching the younger women. Um, one of the things that was said was as soon as you start thinking about what about me, what about me, you're thinking wrong. Um, you are on the wrong track. You're on the track to bitterness and resentment and a big ugly cycle of, you know, distance and coldness. And then finally, hopefully talking about it, resolving it, and getting back on track. And it's such a painful, ugly time. Um, when you start thinking about what about me, what about me, you need to get on your knees and pray immediately. And uh, just ask the Lord to remind you that you are entitled to nothing. You have no rights. And um, we're here to work unto the Lord and to serve our family in love. And um, sometimes we get rewards and sometimes we don't and it doesn't matter because the true reward is the one that the Lord has for us in eternity and that's what we're working towards so we can fall into that trap very often what about me why do I have to get up first in the morning why can't I sleep in why do I have to unload the dishwasher why this why that because just do it joyfully if you want help ask for it if you're gonna do it in a loving manner don't say are you gonna help me can you help me please that is not not loving your attitude is wrong you are not working unto the Lord you are working unto yourself and you're not serving your family in love if you want help ask for it if he can't help you okay and just do it finish you know or drop it finish it later and go hang out and do whatever you want um, so just selfishness is a huge red flag to you're headed down the wrong track and um, this can be also in tiny little things like what music you're listening to in the car you envision something going a certain way and then he has his headphones on the whole time and you're like <laughs> what's going on you know or he pulls his phone out on a date all these little things that bother women so much me included 
um, you can either choose to address it in an unloving manner, um, show them attitude, give them the cold shoulder the rest of the night or the rest of the week, or you can address it, or you can say, you know what, I'm going to let him just enjoy himself right now and back off, or I'm going to go join him and partake in what he's doing and show him that I'm interested in his interests as well. Um, developing a deep friendship with your husband is huge. Um, I think women um, grow deeper in talking uh, as far as relationships go. We get to know each other and love each other so much by talking and men get that by doing things together. And so when we do stuff with our husband, it is the equivalent to them like if they were to sit down and just talk with us for three hours about whatever, you know. Um, so do things with your husband. Do things with them. Um, adore your husband. Don't talk bad about him to anybody in the face of the world. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Even in your own mind. Do not talk bad about your husband. That is the seed of bitterness. The poison of bitterness that will spread like wildfire and can destroy your marriage. It's just evil. So adore him. Even in your own mind, adore him. Um, protect your marriage. Work. <laughs> Work like you are in a constant battle just fighting to keep your marriage safe. This includes um, resolving conflict, not letting anyone uh, be around when you are not in harmony. If your marriage, if you have been in an argument or you are not getting along for whatever reason and things are not resolved, don't go out with friends, you know? Wait until you are good with your husband before you go out and face the world ununited. Um, and this includes being intimate frequently so that you are protected from the natural sinful nature, the natural temptation to lust. There is stuff everywhere, all the time, everywhere we look. And if your husband is not sexually fulfilled at home, he is going to be bombarded with temptation. He will be able to fight that temptation more effectively if he is fulfilled by you at home. So guard your marriage includes make love often, often, often. And um, I have heard it said that when your husband uh, that when he is fulfilled in that way, he feels more loved. Like, that's the most loving expression that you can give him. So, if you're looking for a way to show your husband how much you love him, just make love to him. He will feel more love than anything else you could do. And, um, he will feel, um, like showing you love more. Like, serving you. Like, showing you ways that he can, um, help you around the house or whatever, you know? Um encourage him. I talked about that. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Like I said, like, it's not easy to just name out everything you have to do. It's, we all struggle with different things, but I really think, um, scripture lays it out clearly for us. I think that we need to be transparent with our husbands and I think you need to focus on respecting him. What does respect entail of? What does that include? And we need to do that. Um, and let them know when, let them know I'm trying, let them know I saw where I failed here so that they know that you're aware of how horrible you are. <laughs> I tell my husband all the time, Hey, I'm sorry. I was such, you know, just blech this morning. Please forgive me. The second half of the day will be better, you know? Um, and to be very, very honest, I just told him that right now, like a little while ago before I started making this video. I've been overwhelmed this morning, I haven't had the best attitude, and I'm totally aware of it. And so as soon as the kids went down for a nap, I laid down next to him and I was like, babe man, my attitude has just not been good today, I'm so sorry. And it will be better the second half of the day, I'm aware of it, forgive me. And um, thank you for loving me, even though I am not lovable right now. And so, um, you can be transparent with your husband, you know, show them your heart. I think that when we show each other our hearts and, um, you know what's in each other's hearts, it's a lot easier to love one another. And um, praying together and praying for one another also increases that love tremendously. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, please write me if you have any specific questions that I didn't address. 
Have a great day and God bless you and work, work, work. Fight for your marriages.